What's up guys, Deadbird here. In today's episode, we're going to be using the tween system that I made uh, last episode to animate our UI because right now we're using the animator component and it's not as efficient. So we'll be using the tween system and you might be wondering, well, what if I didn't uh, follow along that video? Cause it's kind of long, but fear not, I'll leave a, dis a link in the description or in the comments, probably both. Uh, to my github and that way you can just download the library and just put it in your somewhere in the assets folder probably in the scripts folder and you'll have something called tween and as long as you have all of this here uh, you'll be fine all right so what we should have so far is bit play um, we should have this little dialogue and you see all these characters they come in and they talk and whatnot and so what we need to do is if we like kind of break this down a uh, bit play is that these characters like come in they fade in everything fades in and then this uh, little dialogue UI kind of moves up and everything moves down so they kind of like converge onto each other and the reason why we're doing this is well a lot of you seem to have problems with uh, this part of the video so I'm going to do the uh, using the tween system and this should fix all your problems because the animator, uh, because there are multiple animators going on, um, they can kind of conflict with each other and cause a lot of issues. So we won't be using the this animator anymore. So on your dialogue container or somewhere in your canvas, you should have a dialogue animator. And we're just going to get rid of this. Um, we're not going to be using it anymore. You can keep the animators on your character portraits because these animations are a little bit more complicated so we'll be uh, keeping these though you can apply the exact same logic onto the character portraits but you'll just have to create those animations through the through the tween library so we won't be doing that but you know it, it is possible so that being said let's uh, see how we can do this all right so let's open up our dialogue manager and here we have our old code involving the opening of the dialogue animation. So this is what would start the animations and everything like that. And we don't need this anymore. So we're just going to delete this. This is handles all of the animations and we don't need to call the coroutine anymore. So we'll delete that. And so we're kind of just left with, um, well, if I hit play, nothing would happen because we're not dequeuing any dialogue. And so let's try to first take it step by step. First, we want to use the tween move to move the dialog box. So we have our dialog box here. And I'm just going to turn it on so we can see it. And I'm just going to try to get this to move up, basically. So let's try to do that. And so the way I would do that is by calling the tween.move. And the tween that move it wants a game object, so this is the game object, or I can just hover over it. It needs a target object, so this is the target object that is going to move, and it's going to be our dialog box. And our dialog box just refers to this dialog box holder here, just to show you what it what it is. And then we need a position, and so we need a target position. So we're gonna make a new vector three, and we want to keep the x position, so we're just going to say dialog box transform.position.x and then we want the dialog box transform.position y and we're just going to add about um, maybe 50 so it's going to move 50 units up and I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look but um, we'll just uh, go back and fix it if it's like too much or too little and so the last thing we need to do is the duration, uh, if I look back over here, is the total duration. So how fast do we want this? Maybe like two seconds, uh, two. And, oh wait, that is not in the right place. Two, there we go. So I had it uh, inside the vector three by accident. And so if I hit play, I hit play and I'm just gonna move this dialog box a little lower so this is like the target where I want it to be and so let's see let's try to subtract um, 50 here so I'm just gonna take this I'm gonna subtract it by 50 
or I'm not add it by key apparently. And then I'm going to hit play. And then I'm going to hit the start dialog button and it's going to move up. And it looks quite kind of okay. Um, I might fiddle around with it a little bit. Alright, so here's the new dialog animation and see it moves up one takes a second, looks pretty smooth. So let's see how we can fade now. So the first thing we need to do is actually turn all these uh, alpha values to zero. So we can't fade in unless they're um, the alpha is zero. Otherwise, they're already going to be at the target alpha. So let's turn all these to zero. And let's remember that the alpha that we want is about 7 point, or 0 0.72. So let's just remember that and turn this all off. I'm just going to turn this all off real quick. So you're just going to go through each every element and make sure that the alpha is zero. All right, everything is at zero now, so we can't see anything, but it's still there. And so let's go back to our code and see how we can fade it in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have to get all the elements, uh, the children within the dialog box holder and fade them individually. Well, through a for each uh, loop. And so we want to cache away all these elements here. And the way we can easily do that is we're going to create a new private variable. And so we can say private, and then we're going to make a list of images. And we'll call this um, dialog images is equal to new list of images. And so we're just initializing it here. And then we're going to do a for each. And we're going to say variable image for each image in, and then we're going to get dialog box dot get components and children. Okay, so make sure that the S is there so we get the multiple components. Uh, so you don't want component, you want components. And so we're going to get the image component within these children here. And then we're going to add, we're going to say dialog image, images dot add. And then we're going to add the image. So this is going to add all of the images that are in the dialog box, or all the children that have images. And so now that we cache this data away, because we don't want to have to do this every single time that we open up our dialog, um, that could be quite expensive. And so we're just going to do it once, and then we have this data forever. So now that we have this, we can actually say for each um, variable, we're going to do the same thing, image in dialog images. We're going to do tween.fade. And let's see what tween.fade wants. Tween.fade wants a target image, and that target image is going to be the image. And then we need a target alpha, and remember it's around 0.72f. And then it wants a total duration, and we'll just keep it at 1 in order to make it the same as uh, tween.move. So they'll finish at the same time. And so let's go back and hit play. And so our dialogue system manager, and so you can't see it, but if I hit the go over here and hit the debug, debug mode, we'll see that over here, this grayed out dialogue images, um, this, there are three images, the dialogue box, background, the next button, the name holder. So if hit tab, it's going to fade in, and here's our uh, dialogue box now. So we have it. So now it fades in. And so now we just need to dequeue the dialog, but there's also something else that we need to do. What the second thing we need to do is the text. So texts are a bit different. Texts are not images. So it's not getting the text component. So we need to get the text component, but our tween library does not have that. And so if you downloaded the GitHub version of this tween, um, you can just skip this part, but if you followed along, 
uh, my last video, I'll quickly add a tween text fade component. And so the way I'm going to do this is so I'm just going to create a new script and call this tween fade text. And we're going to do this really, really fast because it's really, really similar. It's almost the same thing as tween fade. So we're going to get tween fade and then we're going to open up tween fade text here. Oh, I did have it open. So I'm just going to move it next to each other and I'm just going to copy all of this and paste it in here. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm also inheriting from tween data. And I'm going to be using unity engine.ui. Using unity engine.ui. All right. Okay, so instead of target image, we want a text. So we want to change the text, and then we're just going to hit Control RR to make sure that the name of this is something that makes sense. So target text. And then we're going to go over to our tween and implement this. And so we're just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. And instead of fade, we're going to say fade text. Instead of an image, we're going to say a text. I'm going to hit control R, R again to, instead of saying target image, we're going to say target text and save that. And it's going to complain because we need to, instead of saying um, instead of getting tween fade, we're going to get tween fade text. And then we're going to copy all that within here. And it's not going to complain anymore except for the target image. We need to do object to fade dot target text instead. And now it won't complain and we have officially finished implementing our tween fade text. So. We need to go back over to our dialog manager and we're going to do the exact same thing except we're going to be using uh, a text instead. So let's make a new a new private list of texts and we'll call this dialog texts to fade because you don't want to get it confused with um, just the regular dialog text. And so we're gonna make sure that we know that it's the one we need we want to fade. And we'll do the same thing here. Um, like control R R instead of saying dialog images, we'll say um, dialog images to fade. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing here. We're gonna say for each variable text in dialog. Nope. Dialog text in dialog box. Dialog box dot kick components and children. Kick components and children. And we'll get the text components. And then we're going to do dialog text to fade. We're going to add the text. Okay, cool. And so we just need to do that here too for each variable text in dialog text to fade. We're going to say tween dot fade text. And we're going to throw in the texts. And we're going to make this a one because we don't want the text to be a little bit faded out. We want it to be fully opaque and then we're going to make the duration to be one second. So it matches up with everything. And so the next thing we need to do is that the text isn't going to be there because we never dequeue the dialogue, right? And so we need to dequeue the dialogue some way here. And the best place to do it is over here. And so if you look to move, we have a system.action on complete equals null. And we want that uh, action to be the dequeue dialogue. So I can just hit, um, I can hit a comma here and then I can say, parentheses do the lambda expression and this is going to be the action and the action is going to be dq dialog and just like that when the move completes dq dialog will be called and so let's go back over to our 
um, game here and hit play and there will probably be a couple of problems but we'll get through it. And so what we want to see if it fades in, it fades in and we see that um, this all plays out correctly. And so we're very very close to how it was before so we still need to do the character portraits holder so we've only done the dialog box holder so far so if you notice the um, dialog box comes in but where are the characters right and so we want the characters they just kind of pop up immediately and that's not what we really want and so we just have to do that part and we'll be done and so we want the characters to come in to fade in and then like move down along with the dialog all right, so fortunately, in our manager class here, uh, or in our, our manager, our dialog manager, I should say, we already have the information of our, the images of our character portraits. So if you look at character portraits, it already has the images here. So we don't have to do the same thing where we have to like, get component all the images. We have them already, so we can fade them and we can move them really, really easily. So let's see, let's see how we can do that. Alright, so I'm here in my dialog manager and this is starting to get a little bit congested here. So I'm going to move all this information uh, into a new uh, method. And so let's create a new method, call this, um, let's call this dialog initialize, initialize. And we're going to move all of this in here and then delete all this. And then we're just going to call it dialog initialize. And so that way we're not um, we're not just flooding this MQ dialog with a bunch of stuff. All right, so we can just go down here, and we're going to do something very very similar where we can just put the tween move part over here so that they're kind of like together, and we're going to find the character holder. So I'm going to be using the character portrait, uh, the parent of this in order to move all the character portraits because I don't have to move all of them individually. If I can just move them all together, uh, it's a lot easier. And then I also don't need the dialog animator anymore uh, because we're not using the animator. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. I mean, you can just like delete it. Um, and then, well, I'll just have it here in case like someone else from another episode uh, wants to know where it went. And so I'll just be using the character portraits, character portraits, and I can just get any of them. Let's just say the zeroth one. And I want the parent for transform dot parent. And so I'm going to be moving the parent, and so that will move all of them together. And then the position, I wanted to move it down, so we're going to doing a new vector three. And now that I think about it, this could get a little bit. Um, a little too congested with the amount of code uh, and so I'm going to just cache away the character portraits transform my parent so just say uh, portrait portrait parent is equal to and I'm just going to copy this so that just caches it away so you don't have to type this entire thing out every time I'm just going to replace this here with the portrait parent, and then we're gonna say uh, portrait parent. We're gonna do something very, very similar to the tween dot move above, and so we're gonna say perf portrait parent transform dot position dot x because we want to maintain the x position, and then we just want to move the y position down. So we're just gonna say portrait parent dot y or transform dot y minus 35 and then over the duration of one second and we get an error here oh yeah I keep oh transform dot position dot y all right and we're getting the error we transform to a game object oh that game object okay and so we need Trans or we need to convert it to a game object because this, this is a transform, not a game object. So we get the transform, then we convert it to game object, and then now it will be happy with that. Alright, so now that we've moved the portraits down, 
we need to also fade them, uh, fade them in, I should say. And so we can just get the for each variable portrait in character portraits. And so you see, it'll be fine with that. And if I hover over this, this is it's an image. And so we don't need to convert anything. And so we can just say tween dot fade. Uh, we can do the portraits over, and we want it to be one because we want it to be opaque over the duration of one second. And so now that we have all this, um, we can go over into our game here and this should go away once it compiles. Uh, what is this? End of dialogue, dog, and play, dog, close. Oh yeah, we can't do that anymore. So we can't uh, close the dialogue through the animation anymore, so we have to do the exact opposite when we want to close the dialogue of what we're doing now. Limit play, and you see them all fade in, and then, um, well, it's a little offset right now. Uh, they're a little too low, or I have to like move them up first. All right, so I messed around with it, and I tweaked all the values. I moved it up a little bit. That's all I really did. Um, and so now it kind of appears where it should appear. And so we're basically back to square one, except we no longer have to do the um, animations through the animator. This is all through code. And so I've hit next line. Uh, everything works the exact same that used to work, except that we can't close out of this dialog now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have to do all of this again, um, except we're going to, instead of uh, we're going to instead have to reverse all the values. And so we're going to basically just copy this, go down to our end of dialogue, and we're going to paste this below it. And instead of dialogue initialize, we're going to say dialogue close. And then we're going to call dialogue close, dialogue close here. And instead of um, moving this up, we're going to move it down. So if you think about it, you're visualizing your head, all of the things that we did, we're going to do the exact opposite of it. And also, we don't want to DQ the new dialog. We want it to not do anything after it goes away. And so instead of plus 35, we're going to do minus 35. And then instead of minus 35, we're going to do plus 35. And then instead of 72, we're going to make this a zero. So we're fading it back out. We're going to fade this back out. And we're going to fade this back out. All right, and so with that, we are going to open this and play it. And hit play. And you see it does the same thing again. And now when I close it, it all fades back out. All right, so we have a minor problem where if we replay this multiple times, um, you'll see here that I'll just play it and it looks fine. But the more I play it, the more something strange happens. And it's that the dialogue UI becomes a little bit offset. And that's because we're kind of like estimating where we should uh, move these objects. And so they're going to be off by a little bit every single time. All right, so we need two vector threes. And these vector threes are going to be the original position of the character portrait holder and the dialog box holder. And so we need to make sure that we set these values every time we open up the dialog. So let's just create a super quick, um, a super quick method here and call this private void reset position. And we'll just create uh, two vector threes here. Um, and we'll just have it above this variable because, or above this function because this is only gonna be used in this very specific function. And so we're gonna do a private vector three and call this uh, portrait 
portrait start position. And we'll create a new one. Plus vector three. Call this dialog box start position. And so the next thing to do is actually set these values here. And so we're going to be setting these two values within the start uh, start function. So we need to cache these variables, um, the position of these variables away at the start. And so we don't want these to change ever. And so we're going to make the portrait start position equal to the character portrait. Character portraits, we can just get the first one, doesn't really matter. Um, Transform.parent dot position and so we're going to cache away the parent position of the character portraits and then we're going to do the exact same thing with the dialog box start position we're going to cache it away and use the transform position or dot position of the dialog box and so here we cache it away and the next thing we can do is just basically do the opposite um, so we can just copy this, paste this here, and instead of, and I'm just pasting this here just to show you, and we're just going to reverse these two, so we can just copy this part. And so here we're going to set the position of this to the portrait start position. And then we're going to delete this, and then we're going to set the position of the position of the dialog box position and it's going to be the start position. And so there you go, we've successfully uh, reset the position of the character portrait in the dialog box. And so you're, they're always going to be at the exact same spot every single time, and there's not going to be any um, offset going on. And so the next thing we need to do is just to call this, because we haven't called this yet, and we're going to call this whenever we enqueue dialog here. And so we can just put in a uh, dialog initialize so before we do anything we can just reset the positions uh, reset positions here and with that we should be all good to go and so I'm gonna play it multiple times and it's going to appear at the exact same location every single time and so you'll see that we don't get that weird offset going on. It's always going to be at this spot. And there we go. All right, so that's how you do the fading and the moving through code. And with that being said, um, the last thing I want to say is that I'll probably be updating our tween library. So you'll, I'll probably make a new one so you can use this one as an example. But um, I don't like it that much because there's an issue where we'd have to create a tween fade for every type of um, component that we need to fade, like a text, an image, um, like a sprite renderer, all that type of stuff. And in my opinion, it'd be better to have one function uh, fade that kind of interprets what it's looking at and is able to fade anything that it possibly can fade and so that way you don't have to create a ton of different uh, functions and scripts in order to have a fade for every single type you just have one that interprets what it's looking at and so I'll probably create a new one somewhere down the line but you can use this one for now and with that being said I'll see you guys next time I'd like to thank my special patrons Mohammed, Magello, Xavier Herbert Van Helen, Seymour, Castor, Pale Blue Dot, and Polybius. Thank you for being my patrons and supporting this channel. If you like to support my channel, go to patreon.com slash devbird. And I'll see you guys next time.